Great. Uh, thank you, everyone. Just before I jump in, I'll, I'll just ask that I'm using a screen reader. So um, because I'm unmuted now, if people are typing in the chat, um, I'm going to hear it and it might distract me a bit and uh, it might distract you because you'll hear it too. So just for the duration of my little spiel, if, if we could refrain from the chat, I would really appreciate it. Um, I want to thank uh, Minister Coltro for being here today, as well as Give a shout out to all my friends at the Miles Nadal Jewish Community Center and thank you Rachel and Liv for sharing this opportunity with us. There are four points that I wanted to cover today and I know I have five minutes and if anyone knows me well they'll know that <laughs> it's hard for me to be succinct but I'll try. So the first point is we have a federal panel that has been assembled to look at the impact of COVID on the disability community and that is a fantastic step. I know that if David were here, and perhaps he's still here, um, he would agree that 95% of services are at the provincial level, so things like healthcare and education. So what is really needed is panels at not only the federal, but at the provincial and the municipal level. Panels that include the breadth and depth of experiences of people with disabilities. So how do we do that? We make sure that people know about the assembly of the panels and ensure that community stakeholders and community members have an opportunity to participate. So kind of like was done for our Education Standards Committee and Health Standards Committee, ensuring that there is uh, a call out for people to be on the panel in a way that's equitable and fair. So again, making sure that there's a voice at all three levels of government. COVID is a really good revealer and I've heard lots of stories today and on other webinars I've been a part of about how COVID is revealing gaps, gaps in income, gaps in access to equitable health care, gaps in access to equitable education, and the list goes on. So what I want to call out to government is to think about now that we're in COVID crisis mode and we're doing all of these things to intervene, what's going to be the sustainable solution at a systemic level? So looking at things from a solidarity model. So post-COVID, how are we going to be supported? and what are those supports going to look like? Um, it's really important, I think, that we take these as lessons and look at how our community is being treated moving forward. We've seen deaths in long-term care and participation house, and we wanna learn from that and ensure that people have access to equitable standards of living. So that being said, I think about the, the SERB benefit that's $2,000 a month. And I think about that in contrast to the $100 that people are receiving as a top up on Ontario Disability Support Program and OW to cover things like hygiene supplies, extra staple food supplies, uh, transportation to appointments, et cetera, et cetera. But $100, I don't know about you, but that doesn't last very far in my pocket. So I think about that and think, well, why aren't we being given that $2,000 top up? Where is the equity and the social justice in that? So I would call on governments to think about not just, again, thinking past COVID, to think about what is a standard of living? It's certainly not $1,165 a month. And think about maybe giving that uh, $2,000 reflection for people with disabilities and thinking about how to move those standards of living up because it, it's critical. And uh, as going on from that, I think about right now that a lot of us are at home and some of us are studying. And one of the key factors is access to information. So I would encourage governments to ensure that all um, briefings are captioned and have audio description. And I would encourage boards of education to ensure that their online learning management platforms are accessible with screen readers and accessible for people who use text to speech software, magnification software, braille displays, the list goes on. Because as we know, education is an equalizer and we already know that students with disabilities face disproportionate um, access to education and experience myriad barriers to education. So I would urge all boards of education and levels of government to consider access and inclusion as we roll out this online learning management platform. And in thinking about things like in-home supports, I see that a number of people today have mentioned supports in their home. 
And I think about the fact that there hasn't been a streamlined and unified approach to how are people who rely on attendant services supposed to afford and provide PPE and how are those same people supposed to have supports in their home when because of safety people are leaving um, jobs so PSWs are quitting they're not feeling safe attendants are not feeling safe and they're not coming in so as we know we're all being told to socially distant be socially distant but at the same time, that's not possible for a lot of us. So I would urge governments to really think about a strategy whereby attendant services can be streamlined and provided for people with the necessary funding for folks to provide things like PPE and extra uh, additional payment for attendants coming in into the home. I think the other thing that I would like to close with is just to say that it does feel sometimes like from a disability perspective, we've been a bit forgotten. Uh, the rollout of the federal panel has been a great start. I saw that happened within the last week. But it does seem like a lot of the stories I hear, such as half of the deaths in Canada being in long-term care, really make me question.